Shoppers on edge after a shooting at South Park Mall last night. We've got reaction this noon from panicked people worried about how this shooting unfolded. A historic vote by the House. President Trump impeached. Now his case moves to the Senate. More on what's next straight ahead. And no rain chances today, but good rain chances tomorrow. We'll time it out for you coming up. Live from case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. We begin this noon with a live look at a fire on the northwest side. This is in the 3100 block of Majestic Drive. We're told that the fire broke out at a construction site on the Idea School campus at Ingram Hills, but not the actual building where classes are held. Uh, the call came in about an hour ago. At one point, there were 38 units on scene, but a fire department spokesperson there tells us the fire is now out. He says welders were working on the roof of the building under construction when something caught fire. That fire, though, contained just to that area. An IDEA spokesperson tells us students have been evacuated from the building as a precaution. We have a crew there learning more details for you. We have a developing story right now going on. You can stay with us on air as well as online for the latest information. A shooting in the middle of holiday shopping at South Park Mall is having a chilling effect on some shoppers. It certainly is. They say they've worried about the safety there in the wake of violence late last night. San Antonio police still looking for the group of people who shot four people. As Katrina Weber reports, the shooting had other shoppers running for cover. The red and green of the season's decorations took a backseat to red and blue lights and yellow tape at South Park Mall. San Antonio police crowded into the parking lot shortly before 9 last night after hearing about gunshots here. They found four people had been shot, two of them with serious wounds. The shooters got away. And we just saw everybody scre uh, screaming, running, kind of just saying, like, there's a shooter, there's a shooter, he has a gun. Abigail Garcia moment. and her group were at the mall running an errand when they say they noticed chaos break out. So at that moment, I just, like, looked at my friend and my sister, and we were just like, okay, what do we do? They say there was confusion all around them. People caught off guard in the middle of their late-night holiday shopping. According to that shopper's account, what happened here was terrifying and sent people running for their lives. Based on what people are saying on social media now, they're wondering if it's safe to come back. One man who posted on our Twitter page says he had planned to shop there for his wife's gift, but expletive that. A woman called it the scariest moment of her life, running out with her children who were in the middle of taking pictures with Santa. Yet another person posted about plans to go to the mall just moments before the shooting. We never had that before here, so I just is the one time deal, I guess, hopefully. Jimmy Guevara, however, says he's not faced by what happened. He believes the violence was an isolated case, not enough to kill his Christmas shopping spirit. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We reached out to South Park Mall about the shooting. Brian Peters, the vice president and general manager, told us that the safety of shoppers and mall employees is a top priority. He says his security team is trained to handle all types of emergency situations. The mall also works closely with SAPD and is cooperating in this investigation. Meantime, San Antonio police piecing together a chain of events following a different Southside shooting last night. Around 730, police say that a man was shot twice in his living room. They tell us he got into an argument with another man at his home in the 200 block of Canavan. The pair had been drinking and eventually the suspect was asked to leave. But on his way out, police say he fired multiple shots. The victim taken to Sam in critical condition. Meanwhile, the suspect took off in a Navy blue vehicle. And then several hours later, police caught up with the man that they believe is the suspect behind the shooting. Officers were called out to the same address around three in the morning. Police say that the suspect, 20 year old James Henry Bassan, returned. But when officers arrived, he took off again. SAPD launched their Eagle helicopter to help chase him down. They say he ditched his car in the 900 block of Southwest 38th Street. Officers chased him on foot and were able to arrest him. Right now, he's being slapped with a few charges, unlawful carry, evading arrest, and altered registration. They're still looking into charges connected to the shooting. Police also looking for a man who ran over his girlfriend's leg late last night on the north side. It happened at 1130 on McCullough Avenue and Oblate Drive. According to police, a woman got out of the car because she and her boyfriend were arguing. According to police, she tried getting in the driver's seat when the man drove off, and that is when he ran over her leg. Police say the man was driving a Jeep Renegade. 
Some last minute legal maneuvers may bring the aggravated sexual assault trial of Alan Arredondo Bratton to an abrupt end. Bratton was found guilty yesterday in December of 2017. He forced his 25 year old girlfriend to have sex with him as he waved a gun around. He recorded the encounter on his cell phone and that video was the centerpiece of the state's case. His lawyers have now asked that the judge, not the jury, assess punishment. As part of a plea agreement, Bratton would be sentenced to 35 years in prison and 32 cases of possession of child pornography would be dismissed. Six hours of debate on the House floor, ending with a historic impeachment vote. Now it is up to the Senate to decide whether to remove President Trump from office. But it's still unclear when they will get those articles of impeachment. As the House Speaker suggests, she may wait until some of the trial details are worked out. ABC Serena Marshall reports from Washington. For the third time in history, an American president has been impeached by Congress. Article 1 is adopted. The charges, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Democrats say President Trump's actions left them no choice. They accuse him of inviting foreign interference in the 2020 election by pressuring Ukraine to investigate one of his chief political rivals, former Vice President Joe Biden, then blocking witnesses with direct knowledge of what happened with Ukraine from testifying in the impeachment hearings. By his actions, President Trump has broken his oath of office. His conduct continues to undermine our Constitution and threaten our next election. The vote mostly along party lines with not a single Republican voting to impeach President Trump. Voters will never forget that Democrats have been triggered into impeaching the president because they don't like him and they don't like us. While the House was acting, the president was rallying his base in Michigan. This lawless partisan impeachment is a political suicide march for the Democrat Party. The next step in the impeachment is a Senate trial, but Speaker Pelosi now saying she's not sure when she'll send them the articles. Clearly, do you understand when we see what their process is, we will know who and how many we want to send over. Mr. President, it looks like the prosecutors are getting cold feet in front of the entire country and second guessing whether they even want to go to trial. President Trump responding to the speaker in real time on Twitter, frustrated that the Senate can't set a date and in his words, put this whole scam to default as leaders from both parties are scheduled to meet on the Hill to work out the details. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. As President Trump weathers the storm of impeachment, today he finds himself embroiled in a new controversy, though. Members of both parties condemning comments that he made Wednesday night about Democratic Congresswoman De Debbie Dingell, in which he implied that her late husband, Congressman John Dingell, may be in hell. Maybe he's looking up. I don't know. Congressman John Dingell was a World War II veteran who served 60 years in the House of Representatives. He died earlier this year, his life and career receiving widespread praise from both parties. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell took over her late husband's seat in 2015 and Wednesday voted in favor of impeaching President Trump yesterday. Many are now calling on the president to apologize. To the campaign trail now, where the list of those hoping to challenge President Donald Trump in 2020 is down to seven tonight. Those hopefuls taking to the debate stage for the final time this year. Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Bernie Sanders, and Tom Steyer, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang met the qualifications needed for tonight's debate. Now, Biden is the front runner, but the competition is tight with Sanders and Warren. Meanwhile, underdog Yang says he's got a better chance than ever before to make an impression tonight. There will be 50% fewer candidates on the stage this time, and my speaking time would be projected to rise by 50%. So, so it should be a really exciting night. Anybody who sees me speak uh, anywhere will hear the message that uh, I have for America. According to the latest Quinnipiac poll, Buttigieg was in second place but is now struggling with voters under 35. Tonight's debate was nearly derailed by a now-resolved labor dispute between a California union and a catering provider. All seven candidates said that they would not participate if there would have been a picket line. Who would you guess might be some of the busiest people during the holiday season? Maybe those delivery drivers and package packers? Coming up, we're gonna take a look at what those people are up to while you were sleeping. I would've. 
This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Sergeant McCauley, deployed to Afghanistan. I'd like to give a shout out to my son Bryce in San Antonio, Texas, my dad George in Tucson, Arizona. Wishing you guys both a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Love you. Be home soon. For years, FedEx has been known for getting packages where they need to go overnight. Well, that means that employees have to work around the clock sometimes. For some, the workday starts before the sun comes up. And this week's While You Were Sleeping, Katrina Weber takes us inside the local facility where all of that and more gets sorted out. Morning, morning, morning. Here we go. Whether in boxes, bags, or simply laying bare, everything on this belt has somewhere to be after traveling from all over the world. They've been on trucks and on planes. They've been stacked. They've been packed. Now it's up to us to get them to where they need to go. John Santos gets up especially early to do that. This courier shift starts before 5 a.m. at the ship center for FedEx Express. I do no coffee, I do no Red Bull. I can't take that, believe it or not. I mean, it gets me jittery. Just knowing what I need to do and what's in front of me is enough motivation. Well, that's what he said. I mean, he said, put all the 5-1 zip over here. On what any given day, five? there is a lot in front of him and his coworkers. <laughs> Thousands of packages and parcels to divvy up first, then deliver. This company is known worldwide for getting things there fast. During this time of year, our volume typically doubles, almost triples. We're out here all day. After 13 years on the job, he has worked through quite a few Christmas crunches. It can hit here with a vengeance. While these may look like just ordinary boxes and packages, Santos says to him, these are much more. He actually thinks about the person attached to each and every one. Whether it's their online order, uh, important documents, or maybe even their medication, it's, it's oftentimes you make people's day with your delivery. With that thought in mind, he starts making people's days long before daylight. It also fuels him as he heads out on the road. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we appreciate that. Absolutely. It uh, wouldn't be Christmas without all those packages. You know, and I'm sure that they're happy that they were inside overnight sorting through yes, those packages. Yes. Because it was I, quite chilly. I think those warehouses, though, don't have an awful lot of heat. A lot of heating. Yeah, it was yeah. rough this morning. Temperatures dropped down into the teens and 20s, guys. It was cold out there. And the aquifer, it's unchanged. It's at 671.8 in your pollen count. Everything's low. It's just mold and mountain cedar. That's it. So we're not going to worry too much there. We've got some warmer temperatures tonight and then some rain chances tomorrow. We're going to talk about that coming up. We we're just talking about the, the many wardrobe changes you have to make on a day like today because you start <laughs> yeah. out in the 20s, then you get up to near 60. Now you got to change into a lighter little sweater, and then later tonight you're going to be cold again. Yeah, it'll get chilly tonight, but not as cold, I think, as what we saw this morning. We saw some of the coldest temperatures we've seen in a long time this morning. And then tomorrow we got to get ready for some rain, so showers come back in the forecast. But the lows this morning, yes, they were cold, down to 27 here in San Antonio. And then we had the uh, teens, Kerrville, up to Fredericksburg, 16 in Kerrville. At San Antonio International, it was the coldest temp so far this season and for the calendar year. Uh, driving down to 27. Of course, we were at 28 yesterday morning. A little closer look at San Antonio Metro. We got down to 21 around there, uh, around Bernie Stage. 16, as I mentioned, in Kerrville. Dropped to 26 in New Braunfels. 21 in Hondo. Bitterly cold. We had the clear skies, the dry air. That's what set the stage for these really chilly numbers. And look at the sunrise this morning. We put it on time lapse. Just gorgeous. One thing that sun has done is warmed us up. 56 degrees now at the airport. Dew point is at 19. And that will always allow for that big swing in temperatures. We have dry air like that. You'll see cold mornings and warm afternoons. We're also getting a south southeasterly wind at about 14 miles per hour. So that's helping to warm us up some too. It's also going to start to draw some humidity, which will allow for those showers to kick in tomorrow. Visible satellite picture shows we've got some high clouds heading in our direction. These will move in this afternoon. Just some filtered sun though. No big deal here. These are not going to produce any rain, but we'll see an increase in these clouds 
uh, through tonight and by tomorrow we'll probably be looking at cloudy skies. 52 in Kerrville right now, 50 in Rock Springs, 54 Eagle Pass, 57 Carrizo Springs, a few 60s on the map as you get down towards Catula and Laredo. And we mentioned those dew points. Uh, we're talking desert air here with dew points in the 20s and teens. These numbers will start to come up slightly though with that southeasterly wind. We're already starting to see some dew points in the 30s and 40s along the coast and that will start to work their way those higher numbers will start to work their way further inland. Water vapor shows we've got some of the high level moisture starting to drift in out ahead of our next storm system. And we can see our next storm system very clearly here on water vapor. See that swirl right there. That's going to be our next rainmaker and it's moving towards North Texas. There will be enough energy there to get some showers going tomorrow. Nothing that's terribly heavy, but I think showers are a good bet much of the day and that's what our future cast is showing. So let's walk forward in time here. This is six o'clock tomorrow morning. We've got showers and I think rain's a pretty good bet. Morning commute could be a little bit wet tomorrow. You'll probably want to grab the umbrella too as you head out the door. Showers could stick with us much of the day. There could be some pockets of more moderate rain. Still, I don't think this is going to amount uh, to just a whole lot and it's not going to really help us with our drought situation all that much. Every little bit helps, but uh, again, the numbers just aren't going to be that big. And by tomorrow evening, a lot of this rain is starting to move east. And by Saturday midday, we should get some clearing. Sun comes back out for much of the weekend. The weekend looks good. Let's talk about rainfall for tomorrow. Uh, the numbers, eh, not that great. We're talking anywhere from maybe a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Maybe here in San Antonio up to half an inch. And then as you go east and southeast, that's where some of the bigger numbers will be. But even then, we're still talking maybe a quarter of an inch, possibly an inch. Uh, far eastern counties, but that might even be a stretch. Again, most of this is just going to be light rain. Forecast for today up to 62. We've raised the temperatures just a little bit just based on the fact of how warm we are now, but some high thin clouds moving in. Southerly winds 5 to 15. 70% chance of showers tomorrow. That'll keep us cool. 53, 60 on Saturday as we officially go into winter. And if you're hoping for a cold Christmas, yeah, not happening. Uh, <laughs> we're talking upper 60s, low 70s at this point for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. That sounds great. Though. You could barbecue the turkey. You know what? It, it, <laughs> at least it's nice weather. You know, if we're not going to get cold and snow, at least uh, it's it's nice. Absolutely. You can go out and after dinner and walk off the fixings. Yeah, there you go. All right, we'll be right back with sports. Welcome back. It is game day for the San Antonio Spurs tonight. They host the Brooklyn Nets here at home. Tip off is at 7:30 at the AT&T Center. Now the Spurs coming home from a brutal loss to the Houston Rockets. The Nets, however, are coming off of a big win against the New Orleans Pelicans. They won 108 to 101 in overtime Tuesday. And the deed is done. Dozens of high school athletes committed to a college of their choice in National Early Signing Day yesterday. Yesterday, our KSAT photographers were all around town catching these pinnacle moments on camera, like O'Connor High School, where the Panthers offensive lineman Logan Parr has committed to Texas, and his Panther teammate defensive lineman Price and Greer going to Navy. Having a big brother in the Navy, having a uh, cousin in the military also, and my grandfather was also in the military. You know, we're just a military family, and we lead, keeping the tradition going. I mean, it's big. I've been looking forward to it since I committed October 28th, 2018. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm happy it's here. Can't wait to see what the future holds. Meanwhile, over at Steele and Roosevelt High School's more. It's an amazing experience. Uh, my brother already went through it. I see him go through the whole thing. I mean, now that I'm finishing out my high school career, I'm, I'm very grateful about everybody that's kind of helped me along the way. The coaches, players, you know, just a feeling like home, you know, that's just, I knew that's where, the, where I wanted to be. I knew that was the place for me, so that, that's why I chose to be there. And let's not leave out the private schools. At cornerstone defensive back Jordan Morgan is going to Iowa State, and at Antonian linebacker Devin Grant is committed to Colorado, and quarterback Khalil Warfield signed with UTEP. I feel like all the hard work I put in, it's it's showing off, and um, I'm proud that my mom designed to pay for college. It's just a great feeling, just have another opportunity to be with like family and friends and commit to a, a great university. It's Coach Campbell and how he's um, building up the program. I just like I just want to be in the atmosphere of people who are hardworking, disciplined, and honorable.
Then we've got Chris Brown, Brandeis tight end, headed to Cornell. Clemens, linebacker, Derek Lewis's Texas Tech bound. Mason Chambers from Clemens headed up to North to Iowa State, and that's just to name a few. Of course, we've got all of the high school future stars on KSAT.com. Huh? Hmm. Maybe on KSAT.com we have. We're going to have to check the yeah, full list. Absolutely. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are keeping an eye on the weather for right now, but uh, just as important this weekend and next week for Christmas, mm. Justin. Mm -hmm. We've got a good idea now what we think will happen, and it's mostly just good weather, some warmer weather, too. After what was a really cold morning, we dropped into the 20s and teens this morning. Now temperatures have rebounded really nicely. We've gained something like 30 degrees now. 56 at the airport, 56 Randolph, 56 Forestville, 52 Burning Stage, 53 right now. At Bandera. If you pick up the kiddos this afternoon, uh, they're still in school, mostly sunny, 57, and suddenly winds will start to pick up a little bit more. We're starting to see a little bit of increase, slight increase in humidity that will occur, especially tonight. But here's what you need to know next couple days mostly sunny and nice today. Chance of showers, some drizzle tomorrow. Pretty good chance of rain, in fact. Nothing that's terribly heavy, but we'll have that chance around through much of the day. And then clearing skies and comfortable this weekend. Looks pretty good both Saturday and Sunday. Forecast for today will go up to about 62 this afternoon, 58 by 6 o'clock down into the low 50s tonight. Not as cold as what we've seen the last couple of mornings. We're going to talk more about that rain forecast and more about Christmas coming up in just a bit. Devin? Justin, thank you. On the other side of the world, intense heat in Australia leading to hundreds of devastating wildfires. The unbearable temperatures prompting bigger pushes for climate change action. ABC's Julia McFarland has a look at how people are handling the state of emergency. Australia is burning. The country suffered its hottest day on record on Tuesday, but no respite as that record was broken the very next day. The average temperature recorded as 107.4 degrees Fahrenheit, eclipsing both Tuesday's record and the previous one set in 2013. I'll just get through this one first, but yeah, I suppose they're going to get hotter and hotter. In Adelaide, South Australia, a resident hosing down a distressed owl, all too happy to be drenched in cool water, even opening its beak to take in a drink. Meanwhile, the monstrous fires around Sydney covered Australia's biggest city with a blanket of smog. <laughs> Citizens protesting that the government has not done enough to tackle climate change and that the fires are a symptom. The reality of climate change is upon us. Droughts are getting longer and more severe. Heat waves are becoming longer and more severe. Authorities in New South Wales, Australia's most populous state, have declared a state of emergency as they battle a hundred raging wildfires in a crisis that has lasted for months. This aerial footage showing the pillars of smoke sweeping wide across the town in there. A lone helicopter dumping water, highlighting the scale of the crisis. Authorities have repeatedly said that the fires are too big to be put out and that all that can be done is waiting until conditions ease. Australia's best hope is that it starts raining and raining heavily soon. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Meantime, around America, a deadly stabbing rampage in Oregon has shoppers on edge. Police say it started as a bank robbery. A man went into the Wells Fargo inside a strip mall and then went on a rampage, attacking four people and killing a person. Wells Fargo said the person killed in their bank was a customer. Another person was stabbed in the bank and one more person stabbed in the Planet Fitness down the sidewalk. The suspect that took the person's car then stole another car and then stabbed one more person. It's alarming and nerve wracking to think that it could it could have really happen anywhere. We can have all sorts of security systems in place, but unfortunately things like this happen. They continue to happen. The 20 year old suspect was arrested after he ditched the second car and tried to run on foot. The three surviving victims are being treated for stab wounds. 
A judge in Broward County, Florida today considering whether to delay the trial of accused Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. Defense lawyers claim that the case is moving too fast and runs the risk of legal errors. Prosecutors have been pushing to start the trial with jury selection in January. The 21 year old Cruz faces 17 counts of first degree murder for the 2018 massacre. For the first time in more than two decades, Congress has approved funding for gun violence research. $25 million is going to go into a, an account thanks to a massive spending bill on Capitol Hill. Half of that money will go to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The other half will go to the National Institutes of Health. The funding comes as the nation continues to grapple with the effects of frequent mass shootings. For more than two decades, the CDC has avoided firearms research because of its interpretation of the so-called Dickey Amendment. But the sponsor of that amendment, Representative Jay Dickey of Arkansas, has now reversed his position, and that is before he died. The funding for research into gun violence is part of the $1.4 trillion spending deal in the House. Opioid use and suicide, two rising causes of death in the United States, but experts say that they are not as strongly linked as you might think. Experts had said that up to 30% of opioid overdoses were suicides, but a new study by Columbia University researchers found it's actually 4%. That dropped from 9% between 2000 and 2017. Though the overall proportion of suicides by opioids is down, the rate of suicides involving opioids actually increased. Both are ongoing public health issues. The study's lead author says that the primary focus should be on substance abuse. Researchers say that more studies are needed to properly understand the link between suicide and opioid use. The study was published Tuesday in the Journal of American Medical Association. If you or someone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts, contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, the number right there on your screen, 1-800-273-TALK. You can also contact the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. Both helplines are completely free and available 24-7. The Food and Drug Administration has approved the marketing of two low nicotine cigarettes. The agency made that announcement Tuesday, writing the products are the first to be approved for marketing through a new process put into place in 2009. The FDA said while it approved the new cigarettes to be marketed, it does not mean they're safe or FDA approved. According to the agency, traditional cigarettes usually have between 10 to 14 milligrams of nicotine per cigarette. These new products called Moonlight and Moonlight Menthol have nicotine content between 0.2 and 0.7 milligrams. Earlier this week, we kicked off the list of the most Googled medical questions. In today's Health Minute, Jeremy Roth continues that list with the top five most asked questions this year. Here are the top five questions asked of Dr. Google in 2019 and our answers based on medical experts' information. Hiccups often start out of nowhere. The U.S. National Library of Medicine notes that they often happen when you eat too quickly, drink alcohol, or are feeling nervous or excited. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about 8% of people in the U.S. get the seasonal flu. The duration depends on how bad the virus is. Most people can get by with over-the-counter fever reducers, while some will need an antiviral from their doctor. Just like they can start out of nowhere, they can go away just as randomly. Most of the time, they will stop after a few minutes. However, if they persist, see your doctor. There is no shortage of at-home remedies passed down through the generations. Of course, not all of those will work. It's the top diet-related term for the second year in a row. The diet is high in fats, moderate in protein, and very low in carbs, which forces the body to go into ketosis, breaking down ingested and stored body fat, then using that as energy. This was the number one medical question people wanted to know about, and no wonder. According to the CDC, one in three U.S. adults have high blood pressure. Eating a healthy diet with less sodium, watching your weight, and relieving stress can all help reduce blood pressure. For today's Health Minute, I'm Jeremy Roth. A sweet surprise left on a woman's doorstep going viral. We're going to take a closer look still ahead. Despite what Justin just told us, our chances of a white Christmas aren't as far off as you might think. Katie Blake shows us how to cook up some snow for ourselves. We'll show you later on on the News at Noon. Plus, a look at the last-minute holiday shopping frenzy. 
and one of the nation's busiest shopping zones. Just in time for the holidays, Amazon Fresh is expanding grocery delivery here to San Antonio. Prime members are already able to get their whole food deliveries whole food groceries delivered, but now they can shop a whole new online marketplace that includes fresh groceries and produce. And you can get it as fast as one to two hours. With the holidays just around the corner, Prime members can use Amazon Fresh to skip the trip to the busy grocery store or order any last minute items for the big family dinners. You've heard the saying, one person's trash may be another's treasure, and now trash comes with free two day shipping. Reporters at the Wall Street Journal heard reports that some Amazon sellers were listing items that had been rescued from dumpster, dumpsters on the site. So they decided to see if those rumors were true. They went to trash bins behind retailers like Michael's and Trader Joe's looking for unopened items. Unbelievably, it worked. Among the items they were able to sell, get ready for this, a jar of lemon curd. Amazon says that these incidents violate its rules and come from a tiny percentage of the millions of people who sell on its site. The company updated its policy to forbid selling items salvaged from the trash. And nope, it wasn't explicitly forbidden before. Yuck. Wow. Yeah. That's creepy. Mm. All right, you've seen a lot on doorbell security cameras, but one woman in Tennessee didn't capture a porch pirate or a hacker but rather a very happy delivery driver. And it's all thanks to a sweet surprise she left on her doorstep. Alexandria Adams from our CNN affiliate in Nashville has the story. Check it out. An unexpected surprise waiting at a doorstep brought a whole lot of joy to this Amazon delivery driver. Hey, hey, hey. They leave us and that's it, everything. So I thought, you know, what better way to just give a little bit of thank you and spread a little bit of joy this Christmas season um, than to set out this little treat box for the delivery workers. Sarah Barnes says she did a lot of Christmas shopping online this season and wanted to give something to those delivering the goods, something to smile about. All of my Christmas shopping was done online and so I knew that the delivery workers were going to be working extra and coming to my house more than usual and so I just wanted to put out a little something to let them know that they're appreciated. She she says while a lot of drivers take a treat, none of them have responded quite like this. Hey, I'm about to give you snacks and everything. What you mean? Oh, and they got the Capri Sun. And he loved that Capri Sun. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. I wish I could find him and give him a whole box of Capri Sun. I love to dance. And so his little dance, I was like, this is amazing. This is why I did this. This could not be more perfect. A few shoulder pops and shuffles later, and this guy is back to work in his delivery truck. Barnes hopes this inspires more people to do something for others. I just knew that I had to share it and let people know, like, this is what you can do for someone's day with something so small. Be kind, spread joy this season. I love that. And I actually had the same thought because a lot of us are doing a lot of online shopping and the delivery drivers are at the house every day and they're hauling these boxes to you. And something tells me you have a lot more boxes coming to your house, so it's not too late. <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm done. I, I did oh, really? it all early, yeah. Okay. No. Now you have to order something else. Now I got to wrap it all. <laughs> all right, 1244 at 56 degrees. <laughs> Justin, beautiful day shape. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, nice today. Yeah, after a cold start, we got out in the 27 this morning. The high today, 56. The averages are 63 and 41. I think we'll actually be pretty close to the average high temperature, which means we will have gained. Well, so far we've gained about 30 degrees. We may gain a little bit more than that. The records are 82 and 18, and we've got some rainfall headed our way. We're going to talk about that coming up. If you have to wrap a few gifts, as I do, maybe tomorrow on the rainy day? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> it seems like yeah. that's the only day with inclement weather. Uh, pretty much. Ahead. We got a pretty good stretch coming up. There's, there's no doubt about it. It's good for whatever plans you have, wrapping or... Watching LSU football games. You got a tie, by the way. Really? Uh, you got to wait a little while. Every time you LSU see purple, you, you say it's LSU. She's never going to let it go. <laughs> I'm telling people I gave him that time. Listen, you had a good season. You don't have to rub it sorry, in. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, let's talk about drought because we are in the midst of it here in Texas and it's still pretty bad here around South Texas. Uh, we're in a moderate drought here in San Antonio. We showed you these maps the last couple of weeks. Not much has changed, but we do need some rain and there's a little bit coming our way tomorrow. As you look at the big picture here across Texas, 37% of the state is in drought, 35% a week ago. So we've increased it a little bit and it's mostly right here in South Texas where we need the most rain. Here's why I think we're going to get a little bit tomorrow. I don't think it'll be a drought buster, but there is a little bit of a dip in the jet stream there and that's going to be moving in our direction. Should give us some lift. We're going to have enough moisture there where we'll get some showers going tomorrow to last much of the day, at least the, the chances for rain will and we'll get a couple uh, bouts, maybe some moderate rain. The, the, the rainfall totals aren't going to be that great, though, as we talked about. Uh, high clouds are already streaming in ahead of this thing, uh, so we'll get some increase in cloud cover later today. Let's take a look at the future cast going forward. So this is at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Showers start to move in, and we'll get uh, fairly good coverage here. I think we could get, see some drizzle tomorrow morning, so the morning commute could be a little bit wet. Even into the afternoon at 3 o'clock, this shows maybe some more moderate rain working its way through South Texas. Best chances of rain are going to be San Antonio and off to the south and east. By 10 o'clock, a lot of the showers are pushing east. And then by midday Saturday, clouds are out of here. We're seeing sun. Weekend looks good. So it's just one day here where we're looking at rainfall. Uh, rainfall potential, I'd say anywhere from a quarter of an inch to half an inch here in San Antonio. Those numbers will go up some as you get down towards Bevo and Victoria, uh, maybe down towards Corpus. They could pick up close to an inch. Uh, but if you're out west, you're not going to see a lot out of this, and this is not going to help the drought situation all that much, unfortunately. Every little bit helps, but this is probably not enough. Outside right now, we've got uh, mostly clear skies, 56 degrees. Dew point has, uh, well, it shows it's jumped up there. I don't know if that's technically the case. That's probably not right. South Southeast Julie winds at about 14 miles per hour, and the visible satellite picture shows we've got some clouds trying to uh, drift in. Uh, coming in from the south and west. Those are those high clouds I was talking about, and they'll be around through the afternoon. Uh, not a big problem, though, just some filtered sun. 54 Kerrville, 55 Uvalde, 59 Carrizo Springs, 57 down there in Pleasanton. Dew point is at 19. That's correct. Uh, and that's uh, showing that we've got a lot of dry air in place, and that's why we're seeing a big swing in temperatures from the cold morning to this uh, nice afternoon that we're seeing and uh, these numbers will come up a little bit with southeasterly winds and again with that just a little bit added moisture that storm system will kick up some showers tomorrow 62 the high temperature today high thin clouds southerly winds 5 to 15 at miles per hour maybe a little bit gusty from time to time 70 percent chance of rain tomorrow 53 on your friday 60 on saturday as we officially start winter it's not gonna feel like it though because temperatures actually warm up Upper 60s Monday, Tuesday, close to 70 by Christmas Day. Not cold, but nice. We'll get some nice mornings, but not as cold as what we were looking at last couple of mornings. Looks really nice for Christmas. And I'm not complaining. Yeah, not bad at all. Mm -mm. All right, thanks. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Here in South Texas, we can only dream of a white Christmas, but have you ever heard of the saying, fake it till you make it? That's right, and today is Blake's Brainiacs. Meteorologist Katie Blake shows us a very easy experiment that you can do with your kiddos that brings the snow to you, even in this heat. Check it out. Hi guys, all right, I've got one word for you, snow. Yes, beautiful, wonderful, glorious snow, something that we don't see nearly enough of here in South Texas. But even though it's too warm for us to see a lot of snow here in San Antonio, I'm gonna show you today how you can make this a white Christmas at your house. Y'all, this is so easy. All you need is some shaving cream, not shaving gel, shaving cream, baking soda, a little bit of water, and then something to mix it all in. So we're gonna mix around one cup of baking soda with one cup of shaving cream. And then you just mix it together with a fork or your hands, either is fine. If you've got kiddos, definitely let them get their hands in there. All right, once you've got it kind of mixed up, add just a few drops of water. Don't add too much, you can always add more later. But just a few drops to help add a little texture. Okay, and this is your end result. Snow. 
So there you have it, a really easy experiment that you can do at home this holiday season, maybe while the kids are out of school. For more experiments like this, just head to the KSAT Kids page on KSAT.com. Katie Blake, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> It is snowing in South Texas, all right? It's the season of giving, and SA Live is giving us an afternoon encore of their holiday special. The cake decorating challenge, Santa's there, reindeer, snow, and more in this encore presentation. Check it out. Seasons greetings from a somewhat snowy Market Square. <laughs> yes, I know, right? I mean, look at us making it snow here in Market Square with a little help from some Christmas <laughs> magic. And it's extra festive as we count down to the start of SA Live Season of Giving Holiday Special presented by James Avery. Yes, and check out over my shoulder here. The big guy himself is here, Santa Claus, and kids are gonna be talking to him and uh, I think a couple of reindeer may be here as I well. I heard a rumor so. about reindeer too. Yeah, uh, of course. And of course, what is the Christmas season without Christmas caroling? And Jen and I went over there to North Star Mall and we did a little bit of carol crashing, kind of snuck up on people. And it's like, let's sing some Christmas carols. And boy, I'll tell you what, we were amazed at the, how good some people can sing and others, just watch. <laughs> just watch. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, look my at God. That. I know. <laughs> and it is the you've all been waiting for. Not this, not Snow and Market Square, well, but too. we are going to announce the grand prize in our 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. Yeah, and it's going to be a, I mean, already thousands of dollars worth of prizes. Plus, are you ready to uh, put on your baking skills and learn some great techniques? We have got a Christmas holiday baking challenge with some pros and some other good bakers there. This is great here at Market Square. SA Live's <laughs> Season of Giving Holiday <laughs> Special.